Now that I've finished all doable quest lines in the game and most players are now in the waiting line for the next part of the story, I think it's finally the time to review the game in its infancy, what I think about it so far, and what I expect it to be in the future. But first, let's get everyone up to speed. What the hell am I talking about? Well, it's about Honkai Star Rail, the newest game from the developers of Honkai Impact 3 and Genshin Impact, Hoyoverse, released on April 26, 2023. It's a gacha game featuring turn-based combat and a pseudo-open-world exploration complete with puzzles, side quests, and treasure chests to find. As with all games that feature an open-world exploration, the game is populated with a lot of NPCs that players can interact with as well as objects of interest that may give players an unexpected and surprising rewards when examined. The game is populated with enemies in the overworld, and when attacked, or when the player gets attacked by an enemy, the player enters a combat instance wherein they need to defeat all enemies through turn-based combat, strategize around enemy weaknesses, utilize the various strengthening abilities of your party members, and emerge victorious. So, what do I think about the game so far? I think the game is fantastic. Some people may think that turn-based gameplay is a relic of the old past and what's in right now are real-time combat systems and flashy combos, but turn-based combat, even without the nostalgia glasses on, is still a really good gameplay core even for modern video games. And besides, Honkai Star Rail is a gacha game, so it isn't that far-fetched for it to have a turn-based combat system. After all, most gacha games in the market all have rudimentary gameplay and are more focused on the anime girls that the developers market the game with for people to spend more money on. Take for example Azure Lane and Girls Frontline. There are some outliers like the two other recent Impact games, Punishing Grey Raven, Tower Fantasy, and perhaps even Arknights for being a complex tower defense game among other examples, but for the most part, gacha games always had a very basic gameplay loop. As mentioned earlier, the game is a turn-based RPG but there's a twist. It also operates under a stagger system, similar to the combat system of recent Final Fantasy games where you have to stagger enemies to deal huge amount of damage. Fail to do so and it will make a 1 minute fight into a 10 minute one, with a huge chance of you losing. In Honkai Star Rail, that system is called Weakness Break, and that's what occurs when you break the toughness of an enemy using attacks with elements that the enemy is weak to. Performing Weakness Break will deal a huge amount of bonus damage to the enemy depending on the variety of factors and also stalls their turn, sometimes. Again, it depends on what attack made the Weakness Break. In short, the overall combat of the game revolves around countering enemies with this, which is why you are free to see what elements enemies are weak to in the overworld so you can be prepared before entering any fight. Retreating from a battle also doesn't cost you anything except the time it takes you to get back to the fight that you retreated from, just in case you miscalculated what elements to bring. There are also some enemy encounters that happen immediately after a cutscene where it leaves you no chance to check enemy weaknesses and change your party members, so I guess they made retreating cost free to compensate. One thing I feel like missing from the game's combat is a victory screen. While victory screens do get stale over time, especially on a live service game such as this, it would have been great if there was one and players are given an option to disable it once they get tired of it, or perhaps even an option to only show a victory screen for your first victory of the day. And aside from getting materials needed to upgrade characters, weapons, or relics, there really isn't any other merits in fighting enemies in the overworld. I've come to the point where I started to ignore them when I'm backtracking to a place for the second time because of side quests. Characters don't gain friendship levels or its equivalent in other games like in Genshin Impact, so really after fighting enemies during a storyline, they kinda become pointless. Just obstacles that are sometimes annoying when you're caught in the crossfire. The universe the game is in is pretty great. Since the game is a Honkai game, you can definitely get a lot of Honkai Impact references. Well, not just Honkai Impact, but practically any popular media that you may know of. This is most apparent on the first area of the game that you visit after the Jutta area, Bellabog. This is where the infamous main character X Trashcans was born, amongst other memes and references that can be found as you go through the main quest of the area. Refusing to do things that the NPCs are telling you to do, acting like a child and joining a gang of children in the underworld, taking up the namesake of the most well-known meth cooking drug kingpin on your hotel review form, scaring the shit out of a hotel worker on another hotel, the list goes on and on which has made me enjoy the game even more. Which is also what I'm saddened about. 
It feels like the writer spurred all their humor and comedy in the titular area in Bellabog that they kind of get burnt out when it's finally time to rewrite for the second area. Uh, Xianzhou Luofu? I have no idea how to pronounce that, I'm just gonna call this area China. China has a disappointing number of references and memes compared to Bellabog or hell, even the tutorial area. In Bellabog, almost every other prop and objects can be investigated, and the game will tell you quirky descriptions about them. Sometimes there's even a dialogue choice for you to choose from, or even get an optional item that probably will be used in future events. China, on the other hand, doesn't have any of this. There are a lot of props scattered around, sure, but none of them are interactable. Those that you can interact with gives you a generic description, not a humorous, quirky dialogue like the ones from Bellabog. I get that China's storyline is supposed to be more serious because it does deal with the lore that will set the story of the game in the future updates, but in my opinion, you can still insert comedic dialogues here and there and it will not affect the tone of the story. It's all about proper balancing. The storyline in China also feels rather weak compared to Bellabog. I couldn't care less about more than half of the characters introduced in China and can only remember like 50% of them. On the other hand, I am very much invested in the characters in Bellabug and I feel like I'm more connected towards them. China offers a lot of additional lore that pushes the story forward unlike Genshin Impact where it took the game 3 major updates to get just a hint of what's happening in the game. Whereas we're still in version 1.0 of Honkai Star Rail yet we already have a bunch of lore implications offered. But even after all of that, I still feel like Bellabug's storyline is the superior one. Bellabug gave the main character their unique personality which I hope we see a lot more again in the second half of China's storyline. I hope the dullness that the first half of China have is not a sign of what's to come because god damn it, I already missed the writing in Bellabug. I'm planning on getting this more in depth in a future video, but when it comes to the gacha system, it's basically just Genshin Impact. What's with all the pita system and 50-50. For those of you whom those previous 10 words just flew over your heads, you basically get a guaranteed 5 star character within 90 gacha pulls that you do with a 50% chance of it being the featured character or the rate up character on that banner and a guaranteed 4 star character within 10 pulls with a 50% chance of it being one of the featured 4 star characters in that banner. More on that in a future video. The dailies in this game are more akin to Honkai Impact 3 however, where instead of doing 4 individual side quests that rewards you with 10 gacha currency apiece in the final 20 when you complete all of them, Honkai Star Rail instead works on an activity system where the game will give you 8 different tasks that you can do and each of those give activity points. You will get gacha currency for every 100 points you get up to 500 points for a total of 60 gacha currency per day. So far, the lowest amount of points you can get by doing tasks is 100 and the highest amount is 200 so you can actually complete your dailies by just doing at least 3 tasks. The downside of course is that if all you did are 100 point tasks, it will take you 5 tasks instead of 4 to get your 60 gacha currency. Weeklies also give you a certain amount of gacha currency but that's a topic for another day. And I think that's about it for this review. I call this a review but it's more of like a first impression for the game. It's only version 1.0 and the game has been out for only like what, a week and a half as of making this video? I will be making a full review of the game once I get to the actual end game where I have full stacks of max level characters and are only doing events, dailies and weeklies for the gacha currency. If you want to see how Honkai Star will fares in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like. It really helps me out a lot. That's it for me and I'll see you in the next video.